Smith was not able to do this, so Alex is going to cover. Alex is doing many I need things. help, really. Yes. And we're live. Hello, my friends. Um, Patty McCord over here, and uh, Gail Levin. Hey, stick your head in over see if people see. Gail Levin, uh, Alex Bush is messing around. <laughs> right here. The right eye of Alex Bush. <laughs> and uh, Cass Darnell is in the... Uh, People look at this on the uh, Come Together San Diego page. So we're going to start in prayer, and uh, if you join in, you're welcome to do that, even, even if uh, you do this unlive. The unlive. So, um, Patty, you want to start with just giving this whole process to the Lord? Absolutely. Yeah. God, we thank you so much for the privilege of being here, and just pray that you're words will go out today to the people that need to hear them and yes. just pray that Ben's story, every piece of it that we know will glorify you that we'll be able to share that. It will just encourage people and give them hope that uh, God is still writing their story as well. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I pray for Gail. She's, she, she is so active, Father, as you know. You know she's always, always at your, your feet and she's doing so many things for so many different people. Uh, from the Hebrew side, just to the uh, an act, the activity of doing things for the kingdom uh, in many facets. Just bless her mightily. And uh, she's quite a worshiper. She's quite a dancer. She's quite a student. Uh, bless her and everything that she touches. And just, even though the doors are opening, I just pray that not only do they open wider, but you confirm to her how well equipped she actually is to do these things. Whew. Bless her. We come together in this Come Together uh, San Diego radio show that all things work together smoothly. And Alex Bush, one of the premier producers, would be on the show mm. and working the board today is Darnell Ford. We pray for them and uh, everybody listening. And even as we expand the uh, broadcast, expand the broadcast with an FM representation as well, we thank you for the increased audience that happens as a result of expanding to the AM and FM size of the diet. And uh, you want to, uh, Darnell, come in here for just a second. Mm -hmm. This is Darnell Ford, and uh, we're just we're just praying. You got thirty seconds to spare yes. to, to pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for Darnell, and as you guess, he's uh, assuming the board for Tim for this Saturday, but also the remarkable stuff he does on the Frank Sontag show from 2 to 4 on weekday. Bless this man mightily. Bless this man mightily. Bless this man mightily. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Anything you want to lay up with us supporting you in prayer right now? Um, just that God will continue to direct and use me and I will be able to push through some of the obstacles yes. that that comes for me getting to my appointed place. Yes, and the, you, you're going for a master's degree? Yes. Master's degree in what was it? Business. In, in business. MBA. <laughs> an MBA. <laughs> in that too, Father. Alex. Yes. Mm. Oh. We love you, Lord. We love your word. And Holy Spirit, you are always welcome here. Uh, just help us this evening to uh, accomplish what you want to have accomplished, Lord, yes, 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 and continue to expand your kingdom here in San Diego. Yes. I thank you for everybody here and their level of obedience. We know that uh, none of this wouldn't be possible without them stepping up to the plate and, yeah, yeah. hit batting a thousand. <laughs> uh, 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 the other thing. Well, Father, the earth is yours, the kingdom is yours, Lord God. We pray heaven come to earth tonight. Father, we thank you for the listeners, Lord God, that you will bring both during the live presentation and later on when it's posted. And Lord God, we just pray for Kaz as he yes. leads us. Father, it's such a great job that you've given him such a great place of influence. And we bless, we bless him, we bless the staff, we bless everything here in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, thank you, Heavenly Father. You're magnificent. Help us. Glorify your name and what we do, our words and our actions and our lifestyle. And everybody that we touch, everybody that we touch, may we spill you upon them in a mighty way. 
and we, we prayed in particular for Ben Malcolm, so the Father. Uh, give him not only the right words, but just breathe on him and anoint him powerfully. Uh, and, and the stuff that he does on a day-to-day -day basis, and a lot of the things that he does, that he does, uh, are, are are visible in a literally uh, in his uh, influence uh, with uh, Pete Carroll. Uh, people may not even know that Ben had a hand in it, and they may also not know that you had a hand in Ben. So <laughs> glorify your name in this count as well. Bless you, Father. Bless you. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. So uh, I'll be listening to you in the head for the, in the headsets there, darling. All right. Oh uh, yeah. Let me. Um... When we do a break, I'll, I'll do something like uh, blah 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 blah, and we'll be right back, and I'll give you the I'll give you the. All right. <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. I may not hit the. Uh, the peg exactly, but I'll be out. I, I, you know, I'll be. It'll be yeah. a little bit flexible. All right. How about Frank? Is he right on the money, or is he no, slide it, a little it bit? It, it, it comes and goes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when I, I've done some work with some on some radio stations at the top of the hour, they have da 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 da, and it goes right into the news thing. So you've got to hit that peg right, mm -hmm. right on there, and that's their fault if it doesn't happen. It's not the announcer's fault. It's their fault. <laughs> I was just teasing. Kaz, when you're oh, go ahead. okay, go ahead. I don't hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, hello. I can hear you. You can hear me, yes. I can't hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, no. Check one, two. Can I be heard? And you're hearing me too? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, you want to test, just do test, test, one, two, three, say, just say test, one, two, three. Test, one, two, three. Keep going. Keep going. Test, one, two, three. Keep going. Test, one, two, three. Test. Okay, and the third, the other microphone. Check, one, two. Testing, one, two, three. Good. Hello, this is this is called Mike One. That was Mike One again. This is Mike One right here. What mic do you want? Okay, okay, so Mike One, what's the Mic Two? Mike Two is yeah. right here. Come on. Alex. Hello. This is me you're looking for. Yeah, turn that one off as soon as you can. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> I can see it in your smile. He's everywhere. Okay. And I got Mike nothing. Ford. I got no again. song. I got no rhythm. I got nothing for you, Darnell. <laughs> I got nothing for you. I've got rhythm. Okay, I guess we're good. Are you good? You're also quiet. Can you ask for <laughs> anything more? I didn't. I'll talk to you through it. Okay. That's why I like you. She, you know, she she doesn't always do the zinger. She waits for the until you're wide open. You know, the heart is totally <laughs> totally exposed. And she goes little flat. Just just a few words, and then she, she's done. Now you're going to be losing sleep over this. I am all night just because. But of that. I love listening. I wish you finished that first song. <coughs> I'm, I'm already losing sleep tonight because of my son. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> since, since you're up anyway. Yeah. Why don't you think about that's the time you're singing flat. <laughs> Tiffany, oh, Tiffany Bush with Baby, with, is, I hope Dexter's with you, and Alex Bush, well, he's, he's, of course he's always...
posting there, but your beloved's watching, and you're, both of your beloved's. You know, every time, every every morning I have breakfast, it's always breakfast at Tiffany's. I like it, I like yeah. it, I like it. And every time Dexter has breakfast, he gives a little bit back to you. That's right. On your shoulder. It's the gift that keeps on giving. An exponential return pressed down, shaken together. <laughs> Yeah, the scripture that speaks, of course, to that is uh, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, Alex, stick your head over there. I'm going to take a picture and send it to Ben. Oh, that sounds us. great. I want to take a picture of Ben. Why don't you get to take pictures? Where we are today. Okay. I can do a pose like I'm talking. You, I, I like the, I like the finger here. This was pretty a pretty it's good very, touch. I it's thought. very thoughtful. Just yes. to hold my head up and nodding off and then move it. Show. Uh, it's <coughs> it's changed, excuse me. This changed all my apps. I have no idea. Here's my camera. Can you go back? I'm sorry. I can and I shall. I've been moved around. I have no idea why. I'll I use two fingers now. <laughs> nice. Thank you. <sighs> Gail, okay. So give me, give me uh, the the summary of the most recent Hebrew lesson. Come on, Gail. Well, I haven't had one for a little while now. I had my mom bits for you. Now. Yeah, well, I think I was there rooting you on. Yes, you were. I guess it was not appropriate for me to throw that fruit, though. <laughs> so do you know Barney Caston? I sure do. He was in our wedding. Oh, good. Yeah, he's a very dear friend. Yes. And I was in his wedding, actually. Hello. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So I, I, I just, I honored. This gal did a bet in this but just recently, and, she, and she's she's getting very serious about the Hebrew stuff. Gotta love it. Gotta Every love time it. I go to Barney's temple, I wish I was Jewish. It's so incredible. Well, the, you're wonderful just the way you are. No, but it's so neat the way that... I sense a song coming. Do you know Barney? You yes, we've had him on the air. Yeah, I was going to say, you should have him on. He's so good. Yeah, it's very rich. Uh, everything with the Jewish faith is extremely rich. Mm -hmm. Did Ben text you back, by the way? He did not. <clears throat> if he doesn't, show up and we'll just no, show up the Patty McCord show. No, he'll, da, 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 no. Da, da, da. He knows he's coming at 5.10. He may not come at 5, but I don't know. We'll work it out. I was recently learning about the, there's the, the, the stereotype with Jewish people, how they're just very, uh, what's the word looking for? Like, sick. <laughs> with, with money, they're tight with money. But the reason for that is because they have, uh, it goes back to having an obligation to be prosperous and to not be, to not be wasteful. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, hey, by the way, you know, when you have your two guests here, what, what, what should we call them? Um, I don't know. We'll ask them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I didn't get that far. Okay. Yeah. All right. They're both, both from San Diego School District. Uh, they're for both from Oceanside. Oh, they're both the Oceanside schools. Right. Oceanside. Oh, okay. We were supposed to have somebody from San Diego. San Diego, but she could not make that's it. That's fine. It's not a problem. And that's what did I do wrong? Nothing. <laughs> so is Ben going to call in? Or oh, okay. I I call well, in we, we, we give them a him shot him first, but at five minutes to, why don't you try calling him? Okay. I just uh, tried calling him. Oh, by the way, don't don't worry too much about it because he knows to call in at Ten, five, ten after. No, he just okay. texted me. He's gonna call it five. Okay, so he'll he'll call in if he okay. doesn't. We could and we could do a whole show on stereotypes. It's at the top of the hour that you call in, but he's, he's, he's very reliable. Oh yeah, okay. that's part of who oh, he is. Oh, like, <laughs> all right. It's one of Coach Carroll's key rules: it's, it's protect the team, no whining, no excuses, no complaining. Be no stipulation. So he'll probably call it two minutes. I think the reason. Okay. Nice. First of all, we hired Mike. People, well, people think people think it's a bad thing. Like I, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But no, but the thing is, is that in the old country, we were, we were okay. on shuttles. We were in shuttles. So what did you like? Right. In the book? We weren't allowed to go to school. Well, mm -hmm. did you have a chance to read it? I, 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 no, I read, I, I read quickly. And, very yeah, poor. quickly yeah. through it. And and so but I, I just like, I like his character in the whole thing. Oh yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes sense. I think that that's more. Yeah, I appreciate it. He, he seems to have a real love for the we Psalms. Are. I can I can identify that too. So when I was down and out, I always always go to the Psalms because it doesn't anticipate you being great and mighty. It, and it takes you right where you are. It brings you out. So he, he really does that. And the, 
the ups and downs of his life, you know. I, I think that's some really good feedback on the book that people really like that we put the ugly stuff in there, you know, yeah. that we were really honest when it was awful and we've gotten, you know, good comments about that. So it's tough to write it's tough for Ben to share, tough to write, but yeah. I think it was worth it. I, I enjoy the Coach Kiffman part on Oh my gosh. And of, you know what's you know, when you got somebody that goes yeah, grumpy, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what's so funny? We did, when the book came out, you read the whole Get Ben In thing where the school rallied to get him in for a play. I don't know if you got no. to that part. Anyway, the whole USC, they had t-shirts and they were What's chanting in the stands, Get Ben In, Get Ben In. Anyway, so when the book came out, we reached back out to all the people we could and we got more Get Ben In shirts. So the day the book was launched, we had people all Oh, that's us. so fantastic. But the funniest thing was, Coach Kiffin wore one, and he's like the villain in the book. He hadn't, he hadn't even read the book, and he's standing there in his get in shirt, and I just said, oh my gosh, when he no, reads no. the book, he might not be as enthusiastic. Well, but he, I think he, it, it sounds like, he just mad, a factual guy, he just don't give, give him any chat. And they're friends oh, now, yeah. so I'm sure it's all fine, but it was so funny. Just, that was the first picture we got, was Coach Kiffin in his get in shirt. <laughs> And there's a difference between a player and, a, and an associate, too. I mean, if, as a player, the coach is going to yes. lay it on you. Yes. But if you're more on a peer level, it's a little different. Yeah. Get your headset on, if you would, because we're on in three minutes. About that time. And be, be ready for the... Yep. All this stuff. Pete's coming. And lock us in. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. If you want to follow along, there you go. If you want to follow along, there's... Another version of the script. <laughs> Bless this lady mightily. I love you. You're, you're, you're very cool. I like that. And she's one of the no-nonsense people. She she, she works with uh, Rolf Benershka in uh, legacy health strategies. strategies. And uh, she's the one that he entrusts to get stuff done. She's, she's a get stuff done. Well, whoever lady. writes the book, that's the person you want to talk to. So, also, that's awesome. Okay, guys. Am I going to be able to hear you? I'm sorry? Am I going to be able to hear you? Yes. Okay. Well, I don't hear you now. You will. And welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, this is going to be a very, very insightful show on Come Together San Diego for this two-hour live broadcast. 
You know, my name is Cass Taylor, and our co-host for this hour is one of my new best friends, Patty McCord. She's a publisher. She works in healthcare industry as well, and she also likes to help people. You know, the scripture says in Second uh, Corinthians three, it says that we are God's epistles, known and read of all men. And so, what Patty likes to do is she helps helps you write your epistles so other people can know what God is doing to and through you. Patty McCord, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Cass. So I want to say thank you, Patty, for joining us. Thanks, Cass. Great oh, to be here. It's a pleasure. So we're going to talk a lot uh, about another person uh, with whom you have co-authored a book. His name is Ben Malcolmson, Malcolmson, and the name of the book is called Walk on. But before we do, why don't we just get a little, you know, overview of you. Give, give us the elevator speech about uh, Patty McCord. And, and the, the deal is, let her rip. And, and you, you're not a guest. I, I told you that before, you're a co-host, so lay it on us, Patty McCord. It. Well, I think one of the things that's really cool is not about, what I'm doing now is awesome. I work for Rolf Benerska, who yes. played for the Chargers for years, that probably everyone knows and loves that's listening. But what's really neat is the way that I met Ben. I had read, I, I was out at a dinner with my husband, a business dinner, met a woman from Seattle I'd never met before, and she started telling me about this guy that she had just heard speak, and it was Ben. Yes. And as she laid out his story, I said, that is the most incredible story I've ever heard. I can't wait to read the book. Well, <laughs> and, and, and then all of a sudden you're not only reading the book, you're helping him write the book. And you're, you know, some people call these people to do what you're doing. A, a ghost writer. I changed it to Holy Ghost Writer because, we love that. That, because you're, that's who you listen to to help you inscribe what's going on. Why, why don't you spend a moment or two telling a little bit about, about who, who this Ben Malcolmson is and the title of his book, and then we'll bring him in in this segment as soon as you finish giving the old, giving him the old drum roll, and then we'll bring him on. Well, and, hey, ben, ben, if you're listening, get ready for your song and dance. <laughs> Good, so Ben is an incredibly special guy, and he's become dear to me over the past two and a half years. Works for the Seahawks for Pete Carroll. He's his assistant, so does everything from writing his speeches to hosting his guests and whatever he needs to do in between. Yes. But besides all that worldly success, Ben is the kindest, most humblest guy I've ever worked with, and it's just it was such a joy. Yeah. I keep telling him that you know he got the book out of the deal, but I got him out of the deal. Oh, so I ended up on the best side. But we're of that. the better side of that because we're not only getting the uh, the, uh, the author and the ghostwriter author of the book as well, but we're actually getting to hear your temperaments behind the actual written words. So I think what we're going to do right now, Patty McCord, you always wanted to do this so that you didn't have to talk so much. I, you're pretty sly about that. <laughs> <laughs> we want to introduce uh, Ben Malcolmson, and he's on the line from, I think, Seattle, Washington. Are you there, Ben? <laughs> okay, I, I went to the University of Washington, and I looked up at the sky in Seattle many times. Tell me what the sky looks like there. <laughs> it's at least overcast, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, Pat, you know you've heard in, in the introduction that how highly uh, Patty McCord esteems you, and so you guys collaborated on this book, which is entitled "Walk On." And Patty, because you're not a guest on the show, you're a co-host. Why don't you begin uh, the interrogation? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ben. Why don't you tell us how Walk On started? I like it. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I like it. color commentary on that, Patty McCord? It was awesome. It was scary. It was very difficult for me to call a complete stranger and tell him that I thought God was nudging him to do something. But, uh, you know, as Ben unravels his story, you're going to see how important those nudges are exactly. and what happens when you respond. So. But, but I, have to, I have to smile. First of all, you did nudge him. But here, here's the deal. If you knew the background of Ben Malcolmson, it's not like he's not an author or a writer himself. Exactly. I mean, he, he's written articles for Associated Press, Sports Illustrated, just many, many different publications. And he'd be like, I don't know how to structure the story. I mean, come on, really? <laughs> it's just a matter of somebody that just had, like, like Patty, going, we're going to do this, and we're going to do this now in three, two, one. And all of a sudden you go, oh, I know how to handle things like that. Give me a deadline. Give me a word count. Because I'm, I'm, I'm sure that uh, when you write for these big publications, they say, okay, 800 words or 1,000 or 1,500 words. And you go, okay, well, I can do that. And so Patty's going, we're going to make maybe 10 or so chapters on something like this, and let's rock and roll. So she, she was an inspiration to you, but you also had the goods. Uh, let me just make a statement here to my listening friends. Here's the deal we want to come to in this in this hour. We want to come to the revelation that God has you as one of his written epistles, and you're going to be asking yourself, how do you want God to stir you to write what you have what, what you have uh, been undergoing and what God is doing to and through you. So Patty, any thoughts on that? And we'll hand it back off to Ben. Well, I'm sure Ben's going to tell you, but we both feel strongly that God's got a story for all of us. That's very good. And uh, whether it's written out on the pages or it's written out in your life, <laughs> that's, that's the goal, is to find it and go for it. Thoughts on that, Ben? <laughs> Ooh. Yes. Well, wow. he's not only co-writing it with us, he's, he's, he's really, when you realize that he's the, really the main character. <laughs> so we've got about uh, two minutes left in this segment. Patty, where do you, what do you want to ask Ben something? So Thank maybe, you. Ben, why don't you just set it up in these two minutes? Maybe start back at USC and, you know, give people just the opening to the story in two yes, minutes. Yes, yes, yes. And ladies and gentlemen, Ben Malcolmson. <laughs> You know, we're not too serious around here sometimes because people don't want to listen seriously. They want to listen uh, from the heart out, and so uh, we give it to them that way. So lay it on us, Ben. And you have four seconds. <laughs> <coughs> Yes. <laughs> ben Malcolmson, you did a good job of setting the stage for the remaining three segments of this first hour of Come Together San Diego. Uh, any quick thoughts, Patty? No? She, she's nodding her head in a no fashion. But, uh, so I guess I'll take the, the, the reins here. We're really thrilled to have Patty McCord, who serves as guest, uh, our guest 
host here on Come Together San Diego, but she also works with uh, another football legend, Rolf Minershka, with the San Diego Chargers. He's got a lot of different kicking records and so forth, not only uh, in the ch with the Chargers, but also the NFL Man of the Year in years past. So, uh, so you've got quite a, a sports legacy, don't you? Love football. <laughs> I, and I keep ending up with these guys with Ben in their name. <laughs> I love, love it. My listening friend, we've just scratched the surface on uh, how God is the author of you, the book, and how he has authored, along with Patty McCord and Ben McCollum, a book called Walk On. We're going to find out more about that, but not only about the book, but what this book means to YOU. My listening friends, we'll be right back. <coughs> Good job. How was that? Good. It was actually awesome. Good. 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 I know he's listening, but he's so authoritative in his voice. And he Isn't knew he just exactly remarkable? how much time I know you're he had. I'm sorry? He knew exactly how much time yeah, he had. He, he took he it just that. perfectly. He probably, has a, he probably has a stopwatch, come to think of it. Mm. He doesn't even wear a watch. <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> How are you doing, Gail? You okay? How are you doing? I'm super. I'm, I'm enjoying listening. You guys are awesome. Good job. Jim Teak. My goodness. How are you, my friend? And you can hear, my friends, as you are watching this, uh, this is a live stream. You won't be able to hear what's going on in the headsets. You have to go to AM 1210. K or now if it's in the north county on North County Coastal, you can actually go to our new uh, representation on the FM dial, uh, KPRZ FM 106.1. You can hear it either place, or you can go to uh, www.kprz.com and click the Listen Live button from your smartphones and other uh, mobile media. So there you go, and uh, Jim Teak, it's good to have you with us uh, on the live stream and others as well. And... Uh, Henry Goings, how you doing, man? God bless you guys, and uh, going back on the air in a moment or two, as I say, if you want to listen to the actual show with, with uh, Ben, uh, you need to go to the actual radio broadcast and not the behind the scenes. You just hear all the goofy stuff from the behind the scenes. <laughs> goofy stuff, and then serious stuff over there, of course. Where Ben's calling from. What is that? That's where Ben's calling us from. Oh, he's calling from, the, he's on the side of a road? I think on the side of the road. Moving <laughs> <laughs> pine trees. Ha, 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 ha. The side of the road is probably a pretty good place for not, no kid noises and things like that in the background, I he guess. He said no I had more noise. service here than at home. <laughs> <laughs> I snuck out of a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> at least he didn't say my daughter's wedding or something oh, like gosh. that. That would be rude. He's only 33. How much time do we have? Just waiting for commercial break. How much time? Thirty seconds. Have a seat quickly, and we'll talk with you. Later. And don't go past here, or we'll see your faces. Not that you don't have beautiful faces, by the way, Kaz. You can you can move down just a little bit more.
Indeed, we are back, and we are burgeoning with information regarding uh, God writing books through to and through you. And we have a, a case in point, Ben Malcolmson, and his new book called Walk On. But we also have the Holy Ghost writer, uh, a, a, Patty McCord, with us as well. Patty is acting as my co-host for this entire hour. Patty McCord, how you doing? We started, uh, we started a thing, didn't we, the first segment? We did. <laughs> We're off to a great start. <laughs> you know, and I love social media and uh, the new electronic media because uh, Ben actually texted a photograph of wh where he's broadcasting from and you think it would be a nice studio or a nice uh, living room setting. He's in his car on a road. <laughs> ben, how you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was your daughter's wedding? No, just joking, just joking. So, so we, we began you setting the stage uh, with, with uh, you and your writing skills and your, your pieces of your early vision. Why don't you uh, carry, carry the ball here, Patty, you know, do the color commentary and ask the question because have I mentioned that you're not a guest? You're Several a co-host. Times. <laughs> okay, Ben, so you are a journalism major at USC, and you decide that you um, are going to write a special story, but why did you choose to do that? Huh, no, that's great. And there might be some there there might be some uh, speculation on the best uh, NFL coach in the country as well. Uh, it, those of you who are not football people, uh, USC football coach, the illustrious one who's many uh, accolades in that department, but also uh, Super Bowl city basically in 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 
in Seattle for the Seattle Seahawks with uh, Coach Pete Carroll as well. Remarkable story. And you're right in the thick of this thing. And sometimes you probably have to pinch yourself and going, I'm here doing this. How wonderful. <laughs> and Ben, tell them how no, tell them how many people at the tryouts knew that you were actually not trying out. they do to you when they recognized you? Yes, yes. You know, one of the things I noticed is in your book, which is called Walk On, and what a remarkable name. And you were a walk on, basically a reporter walking on. But one of the things you do in the last of each chapter is you bring it home. You talk about how it impacted you, and then you bring it home and say, and here's how this kind of thing can impact you as well. On this radio show, in, in honor of how you dealt with each chapter, I think at the close of this segment and perhaps the others as well, let's turn this around to our listener and see, you know, the... the challenges that they have. Sometimes in your heart of hearts you, you go, boy, you know, I can fantasize that how great it would be doing this, but I'm never going to actually do this. And you may just be put, God may put you in a position to go, maybe you have an opportunity to answer your heart cry. And all of a sudden, you're in the thick of it and you go, well, this must be God. You want to give a word of encouragement to our listeners who may have seen similar experiences in their life that God's saying, well, you thought about it, uh, move into it. And you too, Patty, for the next Let's say we have three minutes left in this segment. Go ahead, Ben, and then Patty. Yes, indeed. Yes, yes, yes. Good inspiration. Good inspiration. Patty McCord. 
Well, I think Ben and I learned through the process of writing the book, there were so many days where we didn't know what was going to happen. And at that point, we didn't have the title Walk On, but that was our spirit. We said we were just going to keep going because that's what God asked us to do. Yes, yes, yes. And it, at many times, many late nights we were writing, it was teeny tiny steps. And some days, you know, they would be big steps. But yes. I think there was never a doubt in our mind that we were meant to keep going. Yes. And we had no idea what was at the end of the road. Yes. We had no idea. So you've got the double entendre, walk on, obviously on the football team, you're, they call you a walk on when you were not, it was not premeditated that you were going to show up and you didn't come from a recommendation from a high school or a college or whatever, you just walked on. But the other piece of this, obviously, is that you, um, in life, you just had to keep walking forward. You know, the scripture that you used at the close of the first chapter, I'm going to close this segment with, it's in Ephesians uh, chapter 3, verse 20. It says, Now all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power, to work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we could even think or ask. By listening, we're going to talk more about these things as we continue with Ben Malcolmson and Patty McCord and the book called Walk On. And we'll walk on more when we come back after this message. We can fix, fix that in post. Yeah, we'll fix that in post. I, but the first name is anyway, so I Sure. Okay, we're going to have to hustle to get through the rest of the story in two seconds, okay. Kaz. Then you're going to have to move me along. Well, Ben, ben can do it. What's he got, like 20 minutes left? How many each segment? He's got two seg the same length that we've just done. Right, but how was that, nine minutes? Uh, each segment-ish? Uh, uh, no, 11 minutes per segment. 11 okay. minutes. So he's got 22 yeah. minutes left. Mm -hmm. Right. He can do it. He don't feel obligated to talk. Hello, Hannah. So the reason, that everything that goes on that's not in the studio, like the commercials and things, you have to listen to the headsets. And so that's why if you pass them back and forth, at least you'll get a nuance of what's going on live from Ben Malcolmson calling from Seattle. Okay. So what do you think, JJ and Brooke? <laughs> Happy to be here. Yes. Bless these guys and the words they're about to share and, and protect them and uh, show yourself mightily through them. Let him run, Kaz. Let him run. Let him run. He can do it. He can do it. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it I'm gonna hand it over fairly quickly to you, and then you can prod him any direction you want him to go. Okay. I mean, you, you guys can do it. All right. I'm just gonna let him run. Let him run. Go, Ben. Go. Sorry, there's more waters there. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> you, sir, are welcome. You are welcome. <laughs> we can all use radio voices. 15 seconds, here we go. Let's all use radio voices. You're welcome. And we're back. You know, we're talking with uh, Ben Malcolmson and his new book called Walk On and Ghost Writer or Holy Ghost Writer along with him, Patty McCord. You know, I was thinking about in the book of Habakkuk, and the, the, uh, chapter 2 or 3, it says um, uh, that God writes his vision upon tables. He says, he says, I want you, my whomever, to write the vision clearly upon tables so that people that read it may run with it. And we're talking about uh, this book and the truths that are going on there. And run with it is a phrase that you used during the break. You said, let's let Ben run with it. So why don't you set the stage and we're going to let Ben run with it. Okay, Ben, so you're at the tryouts for the football team. What happens next?
but you were probably very quick. <laughs> If you haven't looked, you haven't turned back since, but a lot of things have happened between then and now. And I think Patty's going to egg you on to tell part, that part of the story as well, Patty. So then, uh, quickly, I think it's fun to tell them what it was like for you to go to practice when you hadn't played football and you weighed 165 pounds, <laughs> and then tell us what happened at practice three weeks later. <laughs> oh no. Ben, hey Ben, tell them why, why you devoted yourself to that. So let me insert a question. Ben, let me insert a question here. Uh, briefly describe your, the relationship with the Lord going through this. I mean, you, you, we know that you were a believer, but was there any interaction or discussions back and forth of him saying, you going, I can't do this. He says, you can do this. I mean, what, what kind of interactions are going on from, from the heavens uh, <laughs> paging Ben Malcolm? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Patty, any thoughts on it? 
Keep well, going, you, Ben. So yeah. you have the surgery, you get into rehab. What happens next? So, Ben, did that kind of boost your faith back up then? <laughs> We have about uh, three minutes in this segment. I'm going to do the same thing on this segment as we did on the first. We're going to turn it around from, you know, the Ben Malcolmson story, uh, co-written by Patty McCord, Walk On, to your, my listener, your story, and how this might relate to you. You know, one of the scriptures that come to mind is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But he intervenes within our life. Any word of encouragement in the next uh, minute or so? Uh, ben, I'm going to have you do the same thing, Patty, for our listeners. Because we're here to talk about not only the book, but their book or their epistle as well. So Ben, lay it on us. I bet you. I bet you we're going to deal with that in the last segment. Just a sense, <laughs> Patty. Any thoughts here on this segment? I guess what I think about this part of Ben's story is that he he was not a big deal on the football team. He was nothing, as he says. He was the lowest of the lowest. Yeah. He was just holding on by his fingernails. Yet he was going to turn out to have the most incredible purpose. Yes. So you don't have to be a person in this incredibly, mm. you know, visible, famous spot. You can be the guy sitting at the end of the bench, and God's going to use you for mighty things. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. to come. Thank you. Ben, stay with us for this l last segment, and Patty McCord as well, and the book called Walk On. And part of the story is dealing with uh, your, the person for whom you are the assistant, Pete Carroll, uh, of the Seattle Seahawks. And uh, part of him probably rubbed off on you, and part of you probably is rubbing off on him. And that's how God does it. My listening friend, we're going to be back with uh, Ben Malcolmson and uh, Patty McCord in the next segment. But gear up, because uh, this is not only a story about how God used uh, Ben Malcolmson, it's a story about how God is just about ready to use you in remarkable ways. Do not go away, because my friends, we'll be right back. The time goes by so fast. Doesn't it so? My, my, my. Oh it my does gosh. go fast. And when you guys are being chatted with, you know it's going to go... <laughs> <laughs> Are y'all psyched up and ready, Gail? I am. Hi -ya -hi. <laughs> can you hear the show out there? I can. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, you've got, uh, say, 11 minutes to uh, bring this to a the stunning conclu conclusion after this conclusion. You know what's so funny? I've heard this story thousands of times, and I still get excited about yeah. it. I still can't wait for him to tell it. I know exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> but do not let me forget how do people can find the book. I mean, we're talking exactly. all this stuff. It's in Amazon, it's in Barnes and Barnes. But, but you need to tell us that. Okay. Okay? Because right. we don't, and we forgot to mention yeah. it. <laughs> no, that would be good. <laughs> 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 
It's good. It's gonna be. It's a great show. Great show. Oh, it's you're having a great, great show. I can tell. All the way through. <laughs> he's really nice. Yeah, he's terrific. Is that a pen? A pen? I do not. I'm sorry. Do you think we can find Kleenexes out there somewhere? Yes. That'd be great. Not used like last time. Don't give me the used ones, okay? It's you, oh, fresh ones. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Who we got here? Hannah! And Shuresh. <laughs> Hi, guys. God bless you. Just our live stream fans. If you were talking to me, I didn't hear you. You weren't. I didn't say a word. Did you see my lips move? How funny. Is that? No, I didn't. <laughs> Actually, did you? Oh, uh -oh. No. <laughs> you got to watch out for her. <laughs> me, I'm safe. Not to worry. You know I would never lead you down the wrong path. <laughs> <coughs> So when we talk on the microphone, get it closer to your mouth there. We, you can move it to you as well. We, we want you to be about this far away. Well, I'm gonna sit over there. Yeah, you're going yeah, to be sitting over there. Where did we meet first? Isn't that right? Okay. Because I never really met you. You know, you're going to have to listen to the interviews uh, that are not in the studio here. You're going to have to listen to those things by going to AM 1210 K-Praise. And... Uh, Let's do it on the radio or on your smart device, www.kprz.com, and then uh, access it there and push the Listen Live button. That's how you do it. Uh, no, no. The next, the next hour. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Fresh. Uh, do you need more water? Water? Yes. We're, we're okay, I think. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. And we're back. Uh, moments go quickly in, in this uh, radio uh, outreach, don't they? Moments go quickly. They were the words a thousand years, a thousand years ago over a day. <laughs> we're with Patty, uh, Patty McCord, and she is with us as well. She's the ghostwriter for this book called Walk On, but we also have the other author and writer. His name is Ben Malcolmson, about whom this book was written. So, uh, Patty, I'm going to give it to you, but you're going to have to stir this Ben guy up a little bit because we have about ten minutes to, to reach the... Denouement, the conclusion of his story. Go ahead, Patty. Okay, let's go, Ben. You're back. You're back on the team, and you you have your big debut. Tell us about well, that. Well, say it like uh, say it like Pete Carroll would say it. Get on the field, Ben, and do something. <laughs> Get Ben in. Get Ben in. <laughs>
Yes. Yes. It also includes your, your involvement as assistant with uh, uh, Coach Pete Carroll of the Seattle Seahawks as well. I mean, a remarkable story, and uh, it's amazing how quickly the time goes, Patty McCord, doesn't it? It does. So uh, we'll give a little spoiler alert here, huh, Ben, that uh, Ben does eventually find his purpose, but it's <laughs> not until many years later. Yes. And that's such a, an important lesson for all of yes, us, is yes. that even at the time we think that we've missed it, 
we may not find out for days, months, years. Maybe yes. we won't find out till we get to heaven. Yeah, that's right. But um, that's what's so great. It, when you get to see the end of the book, Ben does eventually find what that purpose was, and it's so powerful. It is. And while we're here, we probably ought to give people a way that they can find out more about the book or purchase it. Okay. So it's on uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, anywhere books are sold. And, and the name of the book is Walk On. Walk On, and you could also visit benmalcolmson.com exactly. where you can find more info about Ben and about the story too. Okay. So Ben, before they go, though, you must share the Habakkuk verse. Kaz yeah. jumped in with his Habakkuk verse, and now <laughs> I think you need to make sure and share our Habakkuk verse. And that's Habakkuk uh, chapter 1 of 5. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. Ben, thank you for joining us. And Patty, uh, why don't you give a 30-second encouragement to our listeners, and then I'll close it. Because you know what? I'm not going to let you outdo me, Ben. I've got a scripture, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, ahead, I guess Pat. it's easy to listen to Ben's story. And, you know, he ended up on the number one team in the country, and that's all exciting. And now he works for the Seahawks, and that's also exciting. But God has purposes for us, and the things that he's done in my life, even through Ben's story, are as utterly amazing to me yes. as, as they are to Ben. So it, it's sort of a degree, you know, and you can, it's easy to listen to Ben and say, well, you know, he ended up in this great place, but I'm as excited about the utterly amazing things God has done in my life exactly. and Kaz's and life that, uh, as Ben is about where he and is. And your life, my friend. Exactly. <laughs> You know, there's a scripture. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate both of you guys, uh, uh, Ben Malcolmson and Patty McCord, the ghostwriter. I call her the Holy Ghostwriter that helped you you craft this. Uh, ben, remarkable. And let me. You, one of the things that uh, Ben talked about is he realized that God said, "You just shine your light. That's all you need to do." And so I'm going to end this segment with that scripture you talked about as Isaiah earlier. And I'm and, and what were Isaiah 55 or somewhere in there. I'm going to take Isaiah 60 and says, or it says, "Arise, shine, because your light has come." And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And kings shall come to the brightness of your rising. That's a scripture for you, my listening friend. God has made you a light. And he wants you to shine. And don't worry about it. Because the, no matter how what your wattage is, the light will always win out over the darkness if you allow God's energy through his Holy Spirit to embrighten you. And so, my friend, I want you to remember Amazon.com and... Just to walk on in your faith every day. Walk on in your small faith. Small exactly. And faithfulness. And you can find out you more about the book purpose. called Walk On on Amazon.com and BenMalcolmson.com. BenMalcolmson.com. Ben, thank you for joining us. Patty McCard, the hour goes quickly. You're going to have to write some more books and then come on back and, and do your song and dance. Yeah, I hear you're the dancer. <laughs> oh, yeah, really, thank you very much. You know, the next time we talk about schools and education, uh, Ben and, and, and Patty, one of the things that we talk about is what God is doing in the school system and what the enemy is doing. We're going to talk a little bit more about that and how God wants to circumvent what the enemy is doing in our school system here in San Diego, California, and even beyond. So we'll be right back with other guests and other hosts in just a moment. We'll be right back. Wow. Oh, come on, it's my wife. <laughs> that was terrific. That was like a blitz. Yeah, very oh, my goodness. Yeah, it goes fast. Okay. Um, we're going to have you yes, switch out there. You guys can stay right where you are. And uh, we will just. Thank you, guys. Alex, Cass. Mm -hmm. So much yeah. fun. Say hi to Ralph. I will. Ralph and just say, the ball has been looking a little bit because he's been lifting his head too soon. <laughs> stay down just a little bit longer. Is that yours or mine? Cass? Yes. Is he going to be on? Oh, ben. That's, oh, he's oh, fine, actually. He's, Ben's gone. Ben's okay, gone. do you want to say yeah. bye to him? Or yeah, because you, can, you can just, you can just okay. say so long, Kaz and Patty, thank you. But okay. Kaz thanks you more Good than luck, Patty. Good luck, girls. <laughs> it's all yours. Awesome. I, I'd love to hear you how you got on? involved in the first place sometime. Oh, it was an act of God, honestly. Mm -hmm. I didn't really get involved. God threw me into the game. So when he says you, you're the lady.
God, just throw me in. Keep on screaming. Hang on the bench. You know what? It's true. All of us. Hang on the bench. Just we'll do that. Can you come over here with us? Uh, oh, yeah, let's do that. Can we come over there? Yeah, with come you? on over here because it's got a logo and things like that. You can stand over there. Yep. Where's my? How much time? How much time do we have? Um, we'll take our. Oh yeah. Here's my. Give me some time. I can't How go much that way. There's too many wires. Two minutes. Two minutes. Perfect. Okay. Let me stand and block the camera. I'm going to block this thing. Okay. Well, I could have blocked it. Yeah, I'll go on this way. That, that had to be right next to the All right. Zoom on just a tad. One, two, three. I want eight by ten glossies of this. You You're going to get it too? Stay, stay. Yeah, you send it to me? Yes. Zoom in just a tad again. And one, two, three. All right. You want to take a look at the picture real quick? Make sure it's to your satisfaction? Uh, no. Keep looking at our results. Sure. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Good, good. Girls, Patty. finish strong. Finish strong. Go, go, go. Walk Thank on, you. walk on. Exactly. Go, go, go. Okay, Gail, you okay? I'm good. Yeah. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna have fun. It's just you and me. And the okay. cats go over the headset thing with you with the yeah. Okay. Headsets and volume and everything. Awesome. <coughs> yeah, scoot up a little closer so that you can get closer. To there you go. You okay now? You can even come this way. Just I'm. I'm not. I'm not in the camera. Okay. You okay, Brooks? Brooke. Brooke. Drop the S. We'll drop the S. Brooke and Jason. Singular. Brooke singular. Okay. Hey guys, second hour happening in now o'clock. And we're back for our second hour. This is going to be a very proactive hour on Come Together San Diego. My fellow believers, especially those who have children in the school system, this is going to be a time for us to get a revelation of what's going on in the school systems and the ulterior motives that sometimes go on that we're just, just unaware of. In innocence, you know, we as parents and leaders, we go, that's happening under, you know, kind of, under our noses, we don't even realize it. We're going to talk a little bit more about that and how the school system works and how it doesn't work, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. But I wanted to introduce you to one of my favorite peeps in the world, Gail Levin. She's been a friend for many years, and she is also tied to an outreach and ministry uh, with a gal named Fran Reese. But Gail uh, Levin is with Salt and Light Council, and they what they do is they see a challenge or a problem, and they go attack it. Gail, it's good to have you with us. Oh my gosh, it's so good to be here. <laughs> you know, I, and you've been, you, you, you have a lot of things going on. You, you work in the Hebrew environment too. Um, 
Pastor Lieberman, uh, Tree of Life Ministries, Joel Lieberman. Messianic Congregation. You say Messianic I, say hello to, yes, to and he, Shalom. He's praying for us right now. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things I love about you is you, you don't let a problem go by without uh, taking a look at it and saying, we can take this thing. Yeah, I remember I kind of cornered you one day. Remember that? <laughs> well, it was the Gale 11 <laughs> cornering. I've been cornered by you before. All right. But the topic on this one was vital. Tell us a little briefly about the topic, and we're going to come right back with some people who have some insights on this. Tell us a little bit yeah, about the topic. Yeah, and I, I just want to piggyback on what um, Patty just said. Yes. Every person listening has a destiny, and part of it as biblical citizens is to be involved in what's happening in our culture with yeah. governmental authority. And so what's happening is in school districts around the country, yes. there's, there's curriculums now that are teaching sexual behaviors that are deviant behaviors outside of marriage. Anything no, no, outside it's called of marriage. sex ed, some people They call it comprehensive sexual. sexuality education, CSE. CSE. That's right. And some of the things, you know, we, back in the 60s, I think, we Christians in Judeo-Christian mentality, we took our hands off government saying, oh, let them take care of themselves. We have to deal with uh, godly things in the home environment. And all of a sudden, these, uh, the schools are kind of taking over the curriculum and our, the strategies and the mindsets of our children. We go, what happened? And it's time to circumvent that. So I know that's your heart, and it's the heart uh, of, of dread at uh, Salt and Light Council and right. the, the multitude, of other, multitude of others that are involved in that. So bring us to where we are right now, and then we'll start introducing some people. Okay, well, where we are right now is this is a growing problem. And parents, parents need to be aware of this. Yeah, and we're not talking about, generally speaking, we're talking about San Diego County, uh, north and south. I can tell you all about San Diego County. And what happens is you have certain school boards that are set on introducing these curriculum K through 12. And then you have other school boards that don't even know this is going on. And, and, and yet it's happening in their schools. So when I speak to school board members from certain districts, they have to find out themselves what is yes. being taught. They don't even know. Yes, and we're gonna we have a few parents handy that we're gonna have some insights and buckle up, my friends, because you're gonna hear some things. And actually, I, I, we've decided to change some names of people uh, as well, and so you're not gonna hear their real names, but you're gonna hear their real heart cry. That's and this right. is something to stir you up. Um, these people are actually from the Ocean Oceanside School District. Oceanside That's School correct. District. Yeah. But yeah. the same thing. Listen. The same thing is going on in the San Diego. Uh, in San Diego Unified yes. as well, wow. very much so. So yes. pay close attention, especially not only if you are a, a parent of a, of a, of a child that's, uh, what age group? K through 12. But if you're a, a taxpayer, you're, <laughs> you're paying for this. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, wow, wow. So that means all of us. Wow, wow, wow. So I want to introduce Brooke. And uh, JJ, uh, uh, who are going to be with us, they're actually in studio. So, but I'm going to ask you, Gail, to actually start this because I don't know whether I mentioned before you're not a guest on the show; you're a co-host. That's right. Well, so, thank you so much. So, yes. why don't you jump on in with um, Brooke and JJ? Right. Well, I met JJ first, uh -huh. and uh, she was at a meeting where I was speaking about comprehensive sexuality education, yes. CSE, and um, then I went to a school board meeting at the Oceanside school district, and there that's where I met Brooke. Yes. And so uh, here they are, JJ and Brooke. Well, welcome, guys. We're glad that you are on the air with us. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Very good, Brooke. And why don't you tell us, do you want to give us a brief overview uh, on this JJ, and then I'm going to have Brooke give her input, because we've got the remainder of the hour, but I, I can tell you, because you've been sitting in the studio, you know the hour goes quickly. So why don't we start with you, JJ. Uh, what stirred you up, and you have children in the school system, just kind of give an overview. We don't want you to implicate yourself to get you, you know, people targeting you or anything like that. But you have some valuable things to say. Go ahead, JJ. Okay, thank you. Um, what got me involved was I was um, having my kindergartner just going to school, we're minding our own business, and then I got an email, or I'm sorry, um, a handout yes. that was talking about what their um, sexuality health curriculum was going to be. And I was flabbergasted because I wasn't thinking that a kindergartner would be exposed to sexual health curriculum. And um, I went ahead and I read what the actual lessons were. And the language that they, that they were using was completely inappropriate. And um, having the children diagram uh, little characters. Oh, oh my. With without, without being too descriptive. What does that mean, without being too descriptive? Um, naming personal parts, like being able to write those down. A kindergarten, kindergarten child? Kindergarten, yes, sir. Oh, my, 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 my. And so, 
let me ask you, Brooke, you, you experienced similar things. Tell us a little bit about your story, and then I'll have Gail jump on in and ask the, que the point of questions she knows how to ask. <laughs> well, JJ actually uh, informed me uh, what was going to be taught, because my child was also going to be attending the same school, and I was shocked. I was devastated. I couldn't even sleep knowing that my child was going to be taught this, and I just didn't, um, couldn't imagine a child learning that. And I, all I kept thinking was they were going to take away her innocence. Oh my! And that's not something that I was going to stand by. Yeah, and I, I think one of the things that's a challenge of my friends, uh, some of you may know bits and pieces of this if you have children in these different school districts in San Diego County, but the big question is, what in the world can I do about it? You know, And so one of the things that Salt and Light Council does is they, pride, they like to provide venues and opportunities for us to understand how to be educated, and when you're equipped with education, then you can go out and uh, make your voice heard, but you can also do something behind just a, a voice you can do some act activities. Any thoughts on that, Gail? Yeah, well, we start civic serve ministries in churches. And if you're in a church and, and you want to see everybody in the congregation be able to have a voice to know what's going on, yes. and then to be able to do something about it, contact us at saltandlightcouncil.org. Saltandlightcouncil.org. C-O-U-N-C-I-L dot org. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you for uh, edifying our school education there because it's appropriate because we're talking about school stuff. Right, yeah, we touch on all the issues that are God's on God's heart. Yes. Um, I, I'd like to ask them a question. And sure, that is, Brooke and JJ. Yeah, and, and the question is, how did you feel about getting involved in all this? Is it taking any time to do this? Have you really jumped in? What's it been JJ like? JJ first. Okay, um, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a joke now. Uh, it, it's been extremely time consuming, to be honest, and um, I was not planning on doing this with um, the past several months of my life, but um, I'm honestly like super honored to be in the position. Um, I was paying attention, you know, and I saw this was happening in the schools, and it's not within my personality structure just to let something like that go by. And so, um, and so I just started just like doing the footwork, you know, that, that walk on segment spoke to me. It's like, okay, what's the next thing we can do? How do we let parents know what's going on? Because that was yes. my biggest concern. Yes. Is this okay with Oceanside? If it's okay with Oceanside, you know, what am I going to do? But if it's not okay, I want the community to, to know. Yes, and you know, we're going to continue this conversation. We're going to bring Brooke in as well, and Gail, stay with us for the whole hour because we're going to set the stage uh, and give some revelation that people can blow their mind, but also what they can do about it. And my listen, right. friend, I hope that you're enticed by this, and tell your friends to tune in as well, AM 1210, K Praise, and my listening friend, we will be right back. Awesome. First, first and fourth segment is done. Well, well, we'll continue. We'll, we'll, I'll introduce Gail again, and she'll get with Brooke. Okay, okay. she'll get with Brooke. And uh, so, we, as you can tell, we kind of have to be, do a little bit of see in the past because I'm watching the clock. I'm no. trying to be sensitive to that. So, sorry for snuffing you out of that. Oh segment. no, that's okay. Snuffing you right out of there. No, this way I can. The moments it's quiet, I pray. Yeah, and we can pray. And we can. I want to work in the Judeo-Christian values as, as really part of the. the there's also there's a there's a, a thing behind this. There's a, an agenda well, behind and, and this. And we have three segments to deal with. Yeah. Okay. Because first we have to set the stage for the challenge, and then we can talk a little bit behind the scenes and then jump on it. In fact, I want to I want to find quote right now. <coughs> I'm I'm entrusting you to make sure that we hit all the high points there, Gail Levin. What? What, JJ? How are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, hardly control myself here. <laughs> what does that say? It says that my the memory of my computer is low, but it doesn't make any difference because we're live streaming, yeah. so I'm really going in the computer. But I need to, when I see that, go on. You're so good. You know, thank you for this opportunity because this is really so oh, it's important. It, very important, but I not know. only you know the millions of people that are listening live. We can it's going to increase. It's going to increase when it goes in the archives. That's right. That's right. It's the billion turn into billions of people, trillions. <laughs> people from Mars are going. I did not know that. That's good. Trillion, trillion of Martians. <laughs> <laughs> K 
can't be too serious forever. No, oh, it's good. I also want to say, the teachers are fantastic in the schools. You know, yes. We have great teachers. We have great well, parents. I'll tell you what, I'm going, to hand, I'm going to hand it off to you, and then the, your first task is to have a, a, Brooke take, take, answer the same question that JJ answered. The first right. And then, then I'll let you have kind of free reign. We, you, you've got some high points you want to check off, so make sure that we get to them. Okay. Wait a minute. One picture. Of, lean, lean, lean across. Step. Lean across. Picture of us. And, you know, we're back with uh, co-host Gail Levin and with Salt and Light Council. Salt and Light Council. And Salt and Light Council, is it dot, dot com? Org. Dot org. O-R-G. Dot, dot org. Thank you for straightening me. Thank you for straightening me right out, Gail. You know, we, during the break we were talking about, we, we, we set the stage and, and JJ gave some insights on the initial thoughts from her perspective, and I know we're going to go to Brooke in just a minute, but you had a few thoughts that you wanted to bring in about the teachers and, and the systems in general. Yeah, I just want to say that um, I have family members in the public schools, and so I was at the public schools, not only here, but even on the East Coast, and the teachers are amazing. Yeah. They're, 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 they're dedicated, they're, they're knowledgeable, they love the children, they love each other, their mm -hmm. team, you know, there's a lot of teamwork going on. So the teachers just need to be aware of this, and then they need the Lord to speak to their hearts about how they should approach if it comes to their school district, because not every school district yes. is doing this. Yes, but, but the, and the danger, of course, is getting blown back. And, and, I mean, the enemy wants to use this as something to destroy Judeo-Christian principles mm -hmm. and to des destroy uh, constitutional privilege in America. <clears throat> and there's a lot of behind-the-scenes motives, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well, but I, I want you to, you know, introduce Brooke and have her continue with JJ. Sure, thanks, Ken. Um, Brooke, we were talking before about how has this affected their lives to have this happening, and now they're in quote, kind of in the quote in the fight. Yes, uh, Brooke. Brooke, how's it been for you? Well, I've been um, involved in all the meetings, whether it's a PTO meeting, a small meeting, or a board meeting. Um, it's taken a lot of time from my family, but I feel that. I was put here to fight for this for this cause. Um, I can't imagine just stopping until we get you know what we need to have done. So, are you letting the other parents know that this is going on? Is that part of what you're doing? Yes, we're informing um, by passing flyers, letting them know what is being taught, uh, giving them information, um, because a lot of parents were not aware exactly what was in the program. Yes. A lot of them were expecting to, uh, the kids were going to talk about respect, be kind to one another. Which um, sounds good. All of that sounds great. Right. But it, once you realize what was inside, you were like, oh my God, this is not something that my child should be And how did the parents respond, JJ, when they 
find out the truth. Oh, the parents were actually really grateful to us. You know, I mean, they say thank you so much. Thank you for all the work that you're doing. Thank you for taking your time to come into the community because we were going to schools and passing mm -hmm. flyers out just to let them know what was going on. And they, um, over time, I will say again, like with Oceanside Unified, they um, started updating their websites and put the information on there. And so they were um, responsive to, to the concern of the parents, yes. you know, for sure. But it was, um, it was how, a big deal for the parents. Yeah, how about blowback? I mean, let's hop about the other side of the equation. Are you, you were hearing blowback on the other side, JG and Brooke? Uh, just mostly in the, um, in the boardroom. Oh yeah, I bet. There's I bet. some, um, just very, just, just a few people who are really very, very pro this program, and um, there's name calling and just inappropriate behavior. In, in my mind, you know, it doesn't match up with what we're saying. We're just asking for a proper program, and yeah. um, so that's a school board room, right? right. The school board meetings. Yes, that's, that's what right. you're talking about. Yes. Okay. So Thanks the you. only know Salt and Light Council has a, you know, you're very attuned with what's going on, and what are your visions as to, or what do you call? Uh, tasks that Lord, the Lord has given you is to help not only communicate what's going on, but give people resources and ways to combat that. You want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, you know, one of the things that we're doing is every month on the third Monday of the month, we have a lecture series, and it's online, it's free, it's nationwide, and we've had some of the people who are at, in the national level of stopping CSE uh, Once as, again, CSE means, means comprehensive sexuality education. Thank you. And that, that's, that's what's being taught in the school. Now, when they say CSE or comprehensive sexual, what they're trying to say is they want to protect children from HIV and, and AIDS and also from STDs. And that there's a, there's a law in California that has to be taught one time in junior high and one time, one class in senior in, in high school. But the problem is, is that they've gone way beyond that now, and these curriculums are now K to 12 in some of the districts. Some of the districts start the sixth grade. K to 12. K kindergarten, kindergarten to 12 grade. All the way through. This just as Brooke was saying, or and, you know, JJ was saying for, for her daughter. Wow. And so uh, what's next? What's next is we have to fight this. We have to uh, be responsible citizens, and one of the things is we have to vote. We Ooh, that's <laughs> we a novel vote idea. Vote out <laughs> the, the school board members that are pushing this, and we have to elect people who have godly values. Another thing is, um, in San Diego Unified, they're also using uh, the same curriculum, Rights, Respect, and Responsibility, I think it's called, by Advocates for Youth, which is part of, they're affiliated, very closely affiliated with Planned Parenthood. Yes. Okay. And so, um, there is a petition, and I think there's one for Oceanside too, but San Diego Sex Ed.com. San Diego S E X Sex Ed E D dot com. People can go there. They should go there and sign that petition. And you have one in Oceanside? What do you know we do? It's speakupoceanside.com. Yes. And so I mean there there are avenues <coughs> to be able to uh, do something, but sometimes just a single individual feels like it's frustrating. What can I do? But when you realize that there there are groups that are being pulled together for this, and you know, it's one voice, one can chase a thousand, but two can chase ten thousand. The scripture says so. The more voices you get that uh, show dissatisfaction with the ulterior motives behind this, uh, then you know, there's a vote at stake, and and and, and people pay attention if they are going to lose their job or responsibility? Well, we need the churches to get involved, Thank okay? You. What church could have, you know, 5,000 people in it? Yes. And you get those 5,000 people aware of this, and then they start to um, sign the petition or go to school board meetings, and you can turn this around in a heartbeat yes. if the churches would just get involved. And um, I don't think you have to be a parent to sign that petition, do you? No. No, it's just if you're a concerned citizen, grandparent. Yes. Taxpayer? Ta ta well, taxpayer. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost everybody. <laughs> anyway, well, why don't you spend a moment, take a minute or so to talk to pastors and church leaders right now on what they can do. All right. Well, we love you. We love yes, the pastors, we and we respect you highly. And if you have influence, if you have people that follow you, and, and if you feel led by the Lord, and as you feel, feel led by the Lord, let them 
the people in the congregation know what's happening. And again, connect with the Salt and Light Council because we will continue to give you the latest information and the activation that you need to get people involved. So yes. give us a call. And the, and the call or a, an email or what, so, uh, website visit saltandlightcouncil.org. You yeah. got it. You, <laughs> you are remembering it. Very good. And what is your name again? My name? I don't know. <laughs> you know, but I, we're teasing around a little bit, but the truth of the matter is... Uh, there are people uh, and even supernatural powers going on that want to uh, sideline Judeo-Christian values. Yeah, you know, there's a, an agenda behind this. I don't know if you want to talk about this now or in the next segment. We can set it up here. We have a, a couple minutes All left. Right, well, set it up. There is an agenda. There's an agenda behind this, and it goes back even 100 years. Uh, of course, because of the enemy, it goes back to the Garden of Eden. But, yeah. but um, there's been an active agenda to do something that is promoting what we're having in the schools right now. We'll talk about that. Yeah. We, we talk about it a little bit more, but any uh, thoughts uh, as we close this segment, JJ and Brooke? JJ, any thoughts? I'd like to correct my website. Okay. I, I used the wrong one. It's okay. actually OceansideSexEd.com. OceansideSexEd.com. People can go there. They can, well, peruse the site, and they can find out who, why, what, where, when, and how. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. and if they can want to um, sign up, then they can be in contact with us. Like you said, one voice... You know yeah. what I mean? They can get you with like-minded people, and then we can, um, you know, band together. That's very good. Brooke, thoughts? Well, I would love for the churches to get involved, um, just so we can help kids who have been exposed um, how to handle it, how to proceed with their emotions and the 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 ideas of what they have taught. And I think it's important to help our children. Be yes. prepared to fight that. Yes. You know, we've been asleep at the switch since, like, the 60s, progressively. We've been kind of handing the baton up to yeah, other we'll people who, whom we entrust with the education and things. And all of a sudden, we look back and we go, I didn't realize these things. And, uh, you know, we look around at the world, look around at the United States of America. The, these policies and things like that that have been subtly uh, encroaching upon Judeo-Christian values, they are not only encroaching, they've got a major foothold. It's time for God's kids, people that embrace the Constitution and Judeo-Christian values, to make a stand. And I appreciate Salt and Light Council and saltandlightcouncil.org, by the way, <laughs> Thank you. for doing this. But we're going to spend the, the remainder of the show talking about the ulterior motives, but also what can be done about it. A quick thought. Yeah, I just want to say this. Imagine this. Imagine you're, you're 10 years old, and you're sitting in a classroom with 25, 30 other children, and all of a sudden, you're having to be confronted with this sexual information that even in private would be embarrassing, and even adults don't want to look at it, and now you're in a classroom situation. How do you handle that? That's what our children are facing. Wow. My friend, I suspect you're hearing this, some of you are hearing this for the first time as far as hearing it in this context. You know, generally speaking, that it's going on, but you realize it's in your own hometown, maybe even in your own home school. And so we need to find out more about this, but also to be wise. Uh, scripture says be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Uh, we're pretty good at the harmless of, as doves part, but being the wise as serpents, we don't really kind of comprehend what that means. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're going to talk about these next segments and how to have God's wisdom in combating these kind of things. So my listening friend, I hope that we've whet your appetite because more is to come with uh, Gail Levin, uh, my co-host of Salt and Light Council dot org. And guess what? Gail and Kaz and our guests will be right back. <laughs> There you go. See, I put it on you again. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. How are you girls doing? Good. Good. Well, half over. That does go fast. I know it goes fast. <coughs> it helps that he can, he's uh, lighting it up, right? <laughs> Did you want to talk to me? Okay. Melinda, love you. God bless you guys. And if you want to hear this whole show, go to AM 1210 K-Praise on the radio or www.kprz.com and go to the Listen Live button there and you can listen on your smartphone and other devices as well. Whew, heavy subject. 
but we've got uh, the power of the Holy Spirit and uh, people that are listening and want to obey, and you're among those. We'll talk more. God bless. Where would you like to go with this? Okay, so we have the history um, of it's a worldwide plan, and so I can talk about that. Mm -hmm. And then I could talk about in the United States what the plans are for education. Okay, and I have a surprise that even I haven't told you about. Okay, and so we'll dip in every once in a while with these two and have them just break brief input on what she's just sharing. Yeah. And then yeah, we'll, we'll give it back to her. I know what you think about it, too. <laughs> That's what it means. It's all good. I have a surprise for you. <laughs> oh, yes. Did you realize that? No. <laughs> One minute, headsets on, one minute. And Gail Levin and Kaz are back. Gail from saltandlightcouncil.org. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, what we want to do is, uh, you know, you've heard of intrusions into our uh, constitutional rights. Some, sometimes you've heard of them from afar, but you realize that they're actually right here in our home turf. It really hits home, and I mean that literally. You know, when you're talking about the college environment, we, we kind of knew this, and we think, you know, our college students have a level of maturity, and hopefully they begin to discern these things and stand in, in, in the mix of it, but a lot of times it doesn't happen. If that is a ten tenuous for a college student, imagine how tenuous it is for an elementary school child as well. So, uh, we're, Gail Le Levin and I are talking about uh, some of the history of this plan for education that uh, has ulterior motives. So you want to talk a little bit about that from, from uh, historical? And sure, bring yeah. Bring it home. You know, it's real, this is really crazy making stuff, isn't it? I it mean, is. it's just really crazy making. Uh, you, you go back to, uh, well, first of all, there's a, there's a worldwide agenda. And now we're talking about UNESCO, which is the educational arm of the United Nations, okay? UN Women, um, uh, the World Health Organization, Inter International Planned Parenthood, Federation. Did you know that there's an international plan? No clue. Terrible. They're the most evil. And it's really large. And they have a lot of influence. And so they have decided that sexuality 
should be available for every child from birth. That that pleasure, see they replace marriage, they replace God, and so there what comes in? If we don't exercise our governmental authority, something else comes in. Yeah. And so they have replaced that that pleasure should be available is, is what sex is about and it should be available from birth. Children should have the opportunity to explore who and with and when they want to with whom they want to and we're talking about what? different sexual orientations, different okay. genders. This is a worldwide, worldwide uh, attack, and they say actually that where faith is involved or social values, they're they're the old ones. We have new ones for you. Mm. And children, you see, they're actually developing a wedge between the jet the generations. Well, yeah, and oh, definitely a wedge even between a parent and their child. I mean, I, I've seen this happening. So you know, all of a sudden, the child seems to have more rights than the parent does. And it creates a dissonance so that the children are hearing something at school and they're hearing something else at home in the districts where sure. this is happening because, again, it's not sure. everywhere yet. And so it creates for them a dissonance. They don't, it's a cognitive dissonance, it's called. They don't know who to trust. Well, but also, you know, a kid, they don't want things that favor them the most, whatever seems to be the most fun or the most freeing, they will go, let's go with that direction. I know it's adverse to my mom and dad, but uh, so what, I've got this freedom. All of a sudden you have a, an entirely different issue to deal with uh, in breaking apart the, the family unit. And what it is is sin. They're, well, they're that's good. Permission to sin. I mean, that's it's not cool. good. The sin isn't good, but it's good that you bring that up because it is so true. That's right. The, the enemy does not want to have the family unit and husband and wife and the family unit are really the springboard and the foundation to the strong moral conviction that we see in the United States of America. Parents have the responsibility to raise their children, and you know that's something that both JJ and Brooke brought up that their children are coming home from school. They don't even know what's going on. Yeah. I mean, isn't that terrible? Well, it is, but you know, how much time with your child and training them as, you know, the Bible says to train up the child in the way they should go, and when they are old, they shall not depart from it. But as, as the, the parents are training up the child, intervening within that training up is another an entity in there inserting things that are contrary to what the parent has instructed. And that brings us to another point. And again, the schools have our children more hours, the critical hours during the day, if yes. the children are in public education. And so, uh, in there's, there's actually a move to take parents out of the equation. In 1933, a government spokesman, a United States government spokesman said this, the individualism of Americanism must go. The individualism of Americanism must, must go. go. We expect to accomplish by education what dictators in Europe are seeking to do by compulsion and force. Can anybody say the word socialism and... That's I mean, right. Well, Marxism. And, Marxism, and and so this is this is really critical. CSE, Comprehensive Sexuality Education, that we've been talking about for the first half hour. You can see how it draws your attention, but there's actually it's a distraction. It's actually a distraction from the larger goal, which is the totality of family life education was devised to break down traditional concepts of family, religion, and communities, the foundations of society. How do you like that? Wow, wow, wow. I, and, and Brooke and JJ, I'm going to ask you to be thinking about this because you may want to put some insights from a parental perspective as well. But it's mind-boggling. I did tell you, Gail, it's mind-boggling. and <clears throat> You know, how could we have let it go this far? But when we let we step back a pace, the enemy goes, okay, we want to take that ground, we want to take this ground, we want to take we this ground. We leave a void. We leave a void. And, and the problem is we, we, we have to get back into it now, but it's not irreversible. God can do these things, and God's kids, if we listen and obey, these things can be attacked and overcome as well. We can we can be the overcomers instead of it overcoming us. That's right. If, if we want to get involved, you know, yeah. and this is where, again, everybody listening to this now and in the future has a choice to make, and that is do we want to exert our own governmental authority? Will we go to school board meetings? Will we elect people who have godly values? Will we stand up in yes. this culture for the Lord? Yes, and you just did a good job of bringing it back home again, which gives us an opportunity to talk to JJ and Brooke on what we can do to, to bring this back home. I know, you know, there's a point in time where you had the revelation that things were happening underneath your con out of out of your control in the training up of your children, yes. and uh, it, 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 that's a good incentive to stir you up. And my friend, the dear precious little one that you're sending out to school on weekdays, they're being influenced by influences that are beyond your control. Parents, what are we going to do? 
Taxpayers, what are we going to do? Citizens, what are we going to do? Thoughts, JJ? Absolutely. Well, parents um, just need to be diligent. Yeah. Like for us, I would just read the curriculum, and that was enough to fire me up and say no. But one of the things that I wanted to say is one of the, um, the quotes from the book or from the reference was, to the child, you have the right to know what your body parts are called. So the, 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 this uh, document is saying, child, you have the, you right, have the right without even including the parental input. Right, and the language was very against the parent. It was like talking what you're, what you're talking about, driving a wedge in there. And so I would just encourage parents and grandparents and anybody who's involved in their you know, children or grandchildren's life to go ahead and get the curriculum and read it. And it's our right as citizens, as taxpayers, as parents of students in a, um, in a public school system to find out what they're being taught. Uh, how hard is it to get their hands on the curriculum? Well, now in Oceanside it's easy because we raised a big stir <laughs> and they put it online. Yeah. You know, but you can just, you can, I, for another school district that I'm involved in, I also went directly to the um, and it's your right. The district office it's and I asked right. to see the materials. Exactly. And it is my right. And I just want to say, don't assume that you think your child's school is safe yes. or that their values match your values. Yes, and don't so, assume that somebody else is taking care, in, care of it from the parental right. standpoint. Right, and it's not just San Diego and it's not just Oceanside. I have it on good authority that it's in other schools where it wasn't last spring, but it, they're bringing it in this fall. You're talking about San Diego County, though. I'm talking, yes, it, absolutely. And beyond, Orange County, Carlsbad. LA, and Carlsbad. Yeah, so families in Carlsbad shouldn't wow. feel protected. They should feel like they need to be involved. Wow, Brooke? Don't trust the schools that you, that you send your kids. Well, Make sure that you meet the principal. Read everything that they give you. Don't just put it on the side. I was one of those parents that sometimes I didn't have time to read everything that came in or every email that came in. Well, there's a phrase that says, trust but verify. I mean, yeah. it's okay. You give the person a benefit of the doubt, but you need to verify that, and then you realize they're... You know, in this area or this phraseology or whatever, they're pulling the wool over your eyes. It's easy. Now, I'm a I'm a broadcaster, but I'm also a writer. It's interesting, uh, fairly easy to nuance a sentence to make it sound palatable to everybody. But when you dig in to what does that sentence mean, we're going to change. You know, fundamentally change America. What does that mean? What does that mean? And uh, I want to know about this because I'm the parent, I'm a taxpayer, and I have a right to know about my children in right. this school. Isn't that right? Yes, of course. I mean, otherwise you're, you know, you're sending your kids to be educated with things that you don't agree with. Yes. You have to be involved. You've got to sit there and read. And one thing that um, we were kind of told to kind of placate us, oh, well, you can opt out. Yeah. And you can't opt out of a community. No. If all of the children are being taught that and you opt your child out, maybe 10, 20 kids opt out of, of, the, you know, of the school, your child will be exposed on the playground. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But, but it's not really the time to opt out, it's time to opt in for us. Well, actually, if enough people opt out, then they will have to stop the curriculum because there won't be anybody sitting in the classroom. Well, that's true, but, but if you just entrust the opting out as the solution, you might be in trouble. Right, that's and there's, there's also a parent in Poway last year sat down with the principal in the school and went over the law that California stipulates, and the principal was not even aware of it. So... Parents go to see the principal, sit down, read them the law, help them to know what the limitations are and what they do and don't need to do. Yeah, but you, you don't have to go in by yourself if you have a, another parent that is experiencing the same thing. That thing. would be fantastic. A show, a show of numbers, okay. But approach the principal, the principal approach the principal in a nice way. That's their job. Yeah, oh yeah, don't be going in with right. the banners and you know with the cameras and things like that. Go in, you know, it's better to uh, be soft-spoken first but increase the volume as to the degree that people are not paying attention. That's right. So, my Very listening good. friend, Gail, good. We, we're about ready to end this segment and begin with the other. We're gonna, we've are gonna. we talked about the incendiary uh, value of this, but also uh, the history of this uh, enemy, basically an enemy strategy, and how it plays out uh, historically on a worldwide basis. We're going to get more specific in the U.S. education and, and hit home literally as well. So, my listening friend, Gail, Levin and Kaz will be right back. Do not. Awesome. <laughs> don't don't go away. All right. <clears throat> Nicely done, guys. Real nice. Mm -hmm. This is going to be, people are going to access this. You're doing great. Fantastic. And you're not even intimidated. I try to intimidate you just a little bit, and it's not even successful. You know why? I have spray my little eyes the whole time. You're doing well. Your comments are concise and targeted, and uh, fellow parents will be able to say, I like what they're saying. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that Brooke and JJ girl have to say.
Oh, Lordy. Lordy, Lordy. Yep. Coming around the corner. Coming around the corner. You have two kids in two different schools, and you gave our partner with the emails. Sometimes you miss it. Well, that's the thing. There has to be a better communication system. And that's where the parents come in. That's what, you know. Oh, how about um, what do you. I, I'd like to know what you do want to see for health education. Well, we want the kids to be educated, but we don't want all this other extra stuff that they're adding. So I don't want any sex ed K through five at all. Maybe fifth grade, little, and definitely not the advocates. Well, you. you know, there's there's some really good curriculum that is great at abstinence, you know, um, uh, sex reduce reduce the risk or you avoid the risk. So it's sexual risk avoidance. Oh, avoidance. Okay. Mm -hmm. and there's some, and there's, I, I met with a curriculum developer last week, two two weeks ago, I guess, but. Fantastic. So that could be used to keep your vibe. Because the law is that But the, they still have to talk about certain things. There has to be something that you have contraceptives. They still have to. It's the law. Um, no, seventh grade. So, so, so they have to bring up the different flavors. It was on there. They don't have to. But they have to talk about the other. They do have to talk about contraceptives. So you were at the last school board meeting when they decided to pull everything back? They said they, um, that, you know, want to collaborate with parents in the article, mm -hmm. so the article thing. But parents shouldn't just be collaborating, parents should be at the forefront of what's being done. Mm -hmm. Is that happening? Are, are, are you going to be part of that? <laughs> I went to the bathroom, grabbed a sandwich, visited with my wife, and here you I went am. to the East Coast and back. Huh? huh? Went to the East Coast and yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, right. All right. <laughs> I know where I want to start. I'm oh, sorry. I know, I know where I want to start. Okay, I'm going to hand it to you early on because we have. Uh, Four minutes to the top of the hour, we're out of here. Four minutes to the top of the hour, we're gone. We only have four minutes? No. Oh, we have at the top, the when it gets to uh, four minutes to the top of the hour, we're All right. Gone. That's a good thing. Here time. we go. And we are back. You know, with all the stuff going on against our Judeo-Christian values, the question really becomes, what do we get to do about it? What can we do about it? What, are, what does the scripture say for us to do about it? We're going to be digging. A little bit digging a little bit more in that question, and, and Gail Levin of Salt and Light Council, by the way, saltandlightcouncil.org. See, I, I, I'm getting that, Gail. Good. I know you had a few How do you spell council? C O U N C I L. Oh, right. Anyway, my friend, I know we, we're teasing around a little bit, but the, the topic is yeah. vitally serious, especially if you have, have children in the school system because. Things are going on. And Gail, you wanted to bring something to light before we dig further in. Well, well, think about this phrase. Acceptance is compliance. Silence is compliance. Sil well, that's the big part right there. Silence is compliance. That's yes. right. Yes, yes, yes. And acceptance is compliance. Wow, wow, wow. But yeah, yeah, exactly. But silence is also acceptance, which is compliance. Right. Now, I wanted to take you somewhere, yeah. okay? This woman, Charlotte Iserbit, she, she, was, uh, she wrote a book 
the deliberate dumbing down of America. Yes. And it's it's free on the web. You can you can look at it. It's really a big book. But she said in 1971, when I returned to the United States after living abroad for 18 years, I was shocked to find public education had become a warm, fuzzy, soft, mushy, touch feely experience with its purpose being socialization, not learning. Well, wow. socialization meaning how to get along. Basically. Socialization meaning that the schools are becoming therapists. They're becoming social workers. You see, they took God out, yeah. so there's no system there. Yeah. And every problem, I believe, gets back to that, that God's not in the system anymore. Yes. And whether it's CSE, Comprehensive Sexuality Education, or any other issue, the chaos that's happening, the, 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 the violence that's happening, is because what do you put in when you take God out? That's right. What do you put in? You, you know, th this nation was founded on Judeo-Christian values. That's right. Among the part of the Judeo-Christian values is allow freedom of religion. It's okay. You have a freedom to do that, but we're based on the Judeo-Christian precepts. And, and the same thing happens in Israel. I mean, there's people from uh, the Palestinians and uh, Muslim people that are in the, the Knesset uh, as part of the governing structure. But you just have to know what's going on as the leader in, in the environment to allow different voices to be able to communicate them, but not to allow those different voices to take away your God-given and United States constitutionally given values. That's right, and ultimately it's not a matter of even what curriculum to put in. It's a matter of does it follow God. Say that again, that's excellent. It's not a matter of what curriculum you put in per that's se. Right. It's a, it, the matter is, is it a Judeo-Christian, is it following God? Is it following God? If and it follows God, God will bless it. That's if right. If it's not following God, then he, his hands are off and we're on our own. Yes, yes, yes. We, we, we've let, speaking of his hands are off, our hands have been off for far too long. Well, we are his hands. <coughs> oh, and, I, I, and, I knew and, where you... We are his hands. <laughs> way to go, Gail. And so how is that working for you, exactly. everybody? Yeah. Taking our hands off. How is that working? For well, us? you know, we try to do that in humility and our Christian demure being, and you know. Sure. But the truth of the matter is, uh, in this, and these are the times where this scripture takes effect. The, the kingdom of God suffers violence, mm -hmm. but the violent take it by force. There's, there's a time right now where we kids uh, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ need to take our, the system back because we've allowed it to go very, very far away. And we need to be vigilant in that. And, uh, you know, I, I appreciate uh, uh, Brooke and JJ here that they are actually at ground level dealing with this. And where do you want to take this? We've well, got I, I just want to say this maybe. is really hard, what they're doing. Yes, it because is. Because they're at the forefront. They're the tip of the sphere. Yes. Okay? And unless parents and, and taxpayers, all of us, citizens, biblical citizens, churches, um, congregations, unless we start to pick this up as ours, and start to take responsibility yeah. over it, not only our own children, but the children in the congregations, etc., um, and, and even in neighboring school districts. Yeah, unless but also we start, your next door neighbors as well. That's right. Unless we start to do that, mm -hmm. these parents are standing all by themselves. How that's does right. that feel? JJ, thoughts? That's horrifying. <laughs> I feel like we'd be standing by ourselves. <laughs> but, you know, honestly, in, in the beginning, it does feel like a, a for me, I, don't, I can't speak for Brooke, but it felt like a David and Goliath situation because I mm -hmm. was one of the first people on the scene this year. There was another group of parents on the scene last year, but I was one of the first ones this year, and I was like, where do you go? Who do you turn to? How do we get this thing started? Yes. And it was overwhelming, but I'll tell you what, as soon as that petition got going, we created some things to help people know who we were and what we stood for, then people yeah, started getting on changed. board. Did Absolutely. you find support from parents in other school districts who were doing this also? Did, did, was there any teamwork? Because I see that as something that... Could Definitely. Really help. There's a, I mean, at least a half a dozen um, in, uh, as far away as like Austin, Texas, yes. that mm -hmm. are reaching out to us. Good. Rook? Yeah, we, are, we uh, JJ and I came up with some ideas. How do we search for these people? And she starts searching and searching for other parents. We couldn't just... Uh, believe that we were the only That's two right. people out there, mm -hmm. um, and then we just she just people just start calling her and saying, "I'm so glad that you're out there. We've been fighting last year. We got burned out, um, and so people were just afraid to go against the board." Mm -hmm. You know, that's how a movement starts. Actually, it starts with one person saying, "This happened." It doesn't, am I the only person in the world that had this happen? 
and then the Lord brings somebody else right. who says, you know, I know somebody in this other state or this other town or this other school district, and they're experiencing the same thing. Maybe you should talk to them. Yes. And then they start to get together, and the, the synergy grows. And, and you mentioned an interesting component that the world doesn't have. This <clears throat> scripture says, if my people who are called by my name uh, humble mm -hmm. themselves and right. seek my face and they turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, and uh, I will heal their land. One of the things that we have is Christian believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. We can make our plea to the Lord, and uh, he can not only empower us singularly, but he can put different people in our path, and all of a sudden it's the voice of many waters, many waters of different people speaking this one concerted voice. And things can happen when we are of one vo voice, don't you think, Gail? Yeah, and, and even even I, I never thought that I would find myself in the position I am in so many issues. And it took me totally out of what I thought was my destiny and put me into what God had planned for mm, me. Good. So that's something that right now, people listening to us, yes. you may be missing your destiny. Maybe you're supposed mm. to run a salt and light. Maybe you're supposed to get involved with the school board. Maybe you're supposed to run for the school board. That's it. Let the Lord search your heart. Yeah, because there are a lot of things that we can do by getting involved in the system but not being the system. Isn't that right? Now, we, I want to give each of you about 30 seconds to give uh, a, a closing comment or statement or an encouragement to the listeners here. And why don't we start with you, J.G. and Brooke, and then uh, Gail and I will close out the show right. because it's getting close to the end. Go ahead, right. J.G. Thank you. I just wanted to um, let people know that don't underestimate the power of prayer. That, that's a big deal. So just uh -huh. like really take that to heart. And if you have something that's, um, that seems off to you, follow that and see where it's going to take you and pray about it. And right. that I've met some incredible people on this journey and yeah. I've got some new friends and it's it's been absolutely incredible actually, totally unexpected. Yeah. But um, I, it came out of prayer because the gal who was praying for me, she was praying that um, God would raise up a leader and I keep saying, yeah. that's not me, but then here I'm sitting on a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the truth it's, of the matter is, I think, J.G., is God is more interested than you are to restoring his people. Absolutely. And so he just needs to be have willing people in, in key places to make the That's voice right. heard. It's all in the willingness. I, exactly. Brooke, thoughts? Uh, don't be afraid. I was afraid, and I just felt God pushing me towards this. And um, our pastor said uh, last Sunday, God doesn't put fear. That's right. He's not so there. he's not there to put fear. He That's wants right. us to move forward yep. and just trust in God no matter what happens. Yeah. And the scripture says he will not give you anything beyond you are able to bear, but will within the temptation provide a way of escape mm -hmm. that you may be able to bear it. So God gives each one of us a piece of the puzzle, and the effectiveness of the, effect, effectiveness of the overall plan has to do with you being obedient in that little piece. Gail, quick thoughts? Yeah. If you're listening right now, and, and we just want you to know we love you, if there's something in your life that yes. is struggling right now with anything that we've said, we want you to know that we love people. This is not against anybody. We want to protect children. Yes. We want to protect the next generations coming up. And if you have an issue, then speak to your pastor. Um, there's there's a lot of people there who, who will talk and sit down with you and help you drill it down. Yes, yes. Gail Levin, uh, thank you so much. And uh, your team member with Salt and Light Council, Dot or Grand Reese and many, many others involved in that. My listening friend, we're coming up to the end of this show, but we want to encourage you to do what God tells you to do to impact, you know, right where you live. live. Scripture says Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Ours is uh, San Diego, our home, uh, San Diego, uh, and San Diego County, and then the uttermost parts of the earth as well. So, Gail, what a wonderful time having you co-host with me, saltandlightcouncil.org. My listening friend, we'll be back next week with another remarkable showing. You know what makes it remarkable? God and Y-O-U. We'll be seeing you next week.